Well, it's time for some real talk that you don't want to miss as the ladies and I share about the most important decision that you can make in life. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. You know, life can throw a lot of things your way, and sometimes that can be overwhelming, but God is always faithful. Today, we are going to be bringing you an unscripted chat by looking at dealing with church hurt, walking out scripture, and the significance of the most important decision that you will ever make. But before we get to that, join me around the table is Kendra Kelly Dean. How are you? Hey, I'm Unscripted good. Unscripted chat. Unscripted, let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be so fun. Yes. And I love hearing people's stories because yeah. you just never know what someone has been through it's so true. until you hear it and you see what God's done through them. That's so true. To Haviland Ford. I am so excited to be here. You know, I heard this amazing quote, in our stories lies the glory of God. So I'm so excited to hear different stories and aspects yeah. of how God touches our lives. In our story lies the glory Lies the glory. Mm, I love that. That's good. How are you, Cindy Johnston? <laughs> hey, I'm doing you wonderful. You got a story to tell over here? Yes, I do. <laughs> I have many stories to tell, but there are beautiful stories around this table. Yeah, they really are. I look forward to hearing. Yeah, just uh, real stories, real life stories. Cindy Murdoch, my dear friend of many, many years, how are you? I'm good. We became friends when we were born. We, right we did, and, and wow, we've got when, some when, when we to say tell. over 35 years, we've been friends. So, anyway, um, it's going to be good. It is. I know all your stories. Oh my goodness, you I know was a lot of mine. To decide which story shall I reveal? <laughs> <laughs> and my beautiful daughter in love, Susanna Lamb. Thank you for having me. How are oh, you? I am so excited to be here. Yeah, thank you. All the way. From India. That's right. Moved here when you were 17. Mm -hmm. And then you met your Prince Charming, who happens to be my son. <laughs> and y'all been married? 11 years. Ooh, 11 wow. years. Yes, time flies. Oh. You got That's some awesome. stories. Well, today we've got some very important topics to talk about. Everything from salvation to dealing with hurt and so much more. So I want to get things kicked off by starting with the topic of how we all came to know the Lord. Hmm. So to Haviland, I'm gonna start with you oh, over here. Wow. Because you know, there are people, when we say that, I don't even like to say the word salvation because they're like, what wow. salvation? Like, mm -hmm. what is that? Let's just say, um, God loves you very much and he has a plan for your life and he desires more than anything in the world to have an intimate relationship with you. And all of us here at the table have experienced that. We want to share our story with you today. So let's start with you. I didn't grow up in the, you know, in the traditional church. Actually, right. when I was a kid, I was sent down the stream of the foster care system, mm -hmm. which I've shared on this show before. Right. You know, and but every foster home I ever went to, they made it a point to either have a Christian on television, like Fred Price would always be playing in our home. <laughs> or to send me to church on Sundays. Oh, wow. And so I, I went to a Baptist church, and I thought that the only way to Jesus was through being just baptized in water. Mm -hmm. So I would go to church Sunday, I would get baptized, and then Monday through, you know, Sunday, I would live any way that I wanted. I had no idea that I actually had to accept Christ in my life. And so um, I just... I was living for the world. I was really in the club scene, lost, and thought, you know, just it was just by doing a deed like getting water baptized. Right, so you had a concept of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you didn't know him. I did not know him in a personal way. And there's such way. a difference, because a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I know God in a church, no, 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 no. It's a big difference between knowing about God mm -hmm and knowing God intimately. So how did that change for you? Yeah, well, I didn't know that Jesus could be personal to me. Mm -hmm. um, I hit rock bottom, 17 years old, you know, found myself uh, just living on the street. I actually slept on a park bench. I hit rock bottom. Uh, I, I always say I experienced everything before 17. So I had lived a full life before I was 17 years old. And you're, and you're still empty. And I'm still empty. And I found myself just completely lost.
lost, but I knew enough to know when I would go to church, the songs, mm -hmm. you know, the different feelings that you would get when you would go in because the Lord was there. Mm -hmm. And um, I was on this bench in New York City. I had hit rock bottom. And a friend of the family's who was a praying mother found out that I was there on this bench. And so she came and she actually said, what are you doing here? Like, you don't belong here. And she's like, you're coming home with me. And I'm thinking, this lady is going to actually take me, this sinner, home with her into her house? So she brought me home. I, had, I felt like I didn't have a choice. And I remember when she brought me in her home, I just felt love. I felt the presence of Jesus. And you know what? Your soul was really longing for that, yes. wasn't yes. it? Yes, my soul was longing for that. It was like someone giving me a cup of cold water. I was so thirsty, I didn't realize how thirsty I was. And uh, she was playing Ron Cannoli. I don't know if you guys oh, remember Ron Cannoli. I remember him. <laughs> and I was all of the demons because I was just so broken. Everything was manifesting like, get out of here. Like, you don't belong here. Wow. But she just kept speaking the word over me. And honestly, she dragged me to church every Sunday. She's like, I was that rebellious teenager, drink, smoke, uh, you know, doing whatever. And she took me and she just, un she would not give up on me mm. and saw something in me that I did not see in myself. So it's very important on the salvation journey to have someone that's willing to fight for you. Yeah. So, and so that woman fought for me. So when was your surrender moment? So my surrender moment Everybody was, has a surrender yes. moment, okay? My, Everyone has a surrender moment. You Maybe you hadn't had yours yet, but it's yes. coming. Mm -hmm. And it's just like that God-shaped vacuum in you that's calling, and God is calling you. I mean, he's calling your name. He's like, I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with you. And you have to say either yes or no. I mean, everybody's given an opportunity to say yes or no. So when was your moment? So it was Easter Sunday, 1997. Easter's good. Easter's, Easter's good. a good day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easter's good. And uh, it was at David Ireland's church in New Jersey. And I walked in and he was, I, he could have been saying, Mary had a little lamb. Mm -hmm. Whatever he was saying before he got done, I was at the altar and Jesus actually spoke to me when I was sitting in the pew and he said, he called me by name and said, you're never going to walk this way. You're never going to walk the way you used to walk. Wow. And I started shaking under the presence of God, ran to the altar, gave my life to the Lord for real, for real. And that was, that was the transformation. It wasn't just a Fred Price on TV. It became very personal for mm -hmm. me yeah. in a real way. And so that was yeah. like a transforming moment for you. Completely. Like when I, you know, I had a potty mouth and I would curse like a sailor. It was bad. And I remember leaving church and I, and I wanted to swear and I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. It was like the hot cold touched my lip. That I, and I just, it was like the Lord literally changed my appetite. He changed my words. And I found myself just speaking blessings over people. It was incredible. The Lord completely did a And God a can do that. Yes, I, I, I still say that's the greatest miracle. Yes. When someone says, God, okay, mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. you. Come yes. in my life. Forgive me. It's transforming. I hear these stories. I've heard them for the last 35 years of interviewing people. It is always amazing. Kendra Kelly Dean, you were raised as a PK, pastor's I kid. I was. I came out the womb loving Jesus. Yes, yeah, you did. And singing. You know, and singing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, but at, at the age of six, you know, they had one of those um, Judgment Day skits, oh, yeah. you know, where at there's church. a guy there with the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're at church and someone walks down and says, you're not in the Lamb's Book of Life. No, and demons come and take them away into the other room, you know. <laughs> and so at the age of six, I gave my heart to Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's how that old I was. I was, yeah. I don't have a, tr a dramatic story. <laughs> you know? I, I'll tell mine in a minute. Go yeah. ahead. So you went down. So I, um, I received him as my Lord and Savior then, but it wasn't until I was about 18 or 19 that I understood the intimacy mm -hmm. of the relationship that right. Jesus has for us. Right. And so before then, it was just something that I did. And I was all in and I surrendered and I knew what to do and how to behave, how to act. But I didn't understand that he was so personal mm -hmm. yeah. until I got older and until he started healing wounds in my heart mm -hmm. that had been caused, you know, from church people and things like that. Life just happens. And it wasn't until I surrendered all of that to him that I began to say, oh, wow, he really cares about me, mm. not just what I can do. Yeah. You know? I think about that song, oh, how he loves you <laughs> and me. I always think so about a song much. when we're hearing a testimony. <laughs> That's awesome. Cindy. Yes. Johnston, Hello. another PK. Yes. Preacher's kid mm -hmm. who loved Jesus and then got off track a little bit. <laughs> yes. So, and then it's good to hear all these stories because mm -hmm. I don't know where you are, if you've ever even heard anything about like what we're talking about today, but um, 
that's why you're listening because there is that God-shaped vacuum on the inside of you that's that's longing for more. Yeah. And uh, what we're talking about today is a peace that passes all understanding. Mm-hmm. It is a um, it, it is a, a peace and a love that you've never experienced before. And it's really just one prayer away. We're going to give you an opportunity to pray that in just a little bit. But let's hear about your story, dear. Well, I, being raised in a pastor's home, was in church every time. The doors open. The doors open, <laughs> right. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And I really had a very tender heart for the Lord very early on. And we would have altar services where people would go and pray after a service. And um, if the when the message would touch my heart, whatever it was about, I was always like, Lord, please please forgive me for this or take time to worship him. Well, um, about 18, I moved out on my own and I started thinking about my relationship with Jesus. And I thought, you know, is this really real? Although I had experienced that and you couldn't have convinced me otherwise because of wanting to fit in and the peer pressure, but I wanted to be like them. So I was very willing to experience things that I would have never even thought about doing. I mean, that's where, like, you first experienced, like, drinking alcohol. You never really drank before. Never. And there was, like, oh, yeah, there was, here. There was one time that I just, I said, oh, yes, I know. And they said, what would you like to drink? And I said, It doesn't matter, whatever, you know, because I didn't know what to say. And uh, so I did and gulped it down, a glass of wine. And they said, you can't do that again. I said, yes, I can. (laughs) So my ignorance again and basically fell out in the floor And they, I mean, they saw for real what I was as far as I had been very naive. But that had, for about 18 months, I was searching. And I, but I never felt peace because I knew what the truth was. Yeah. And so after about 18 months, I just said, Lord, if you'll have me. Yeah. I'm ready to surrender. Yes. I not only had to take that step, I had to take a step to turn around and yeah. not go back to that. Yeah. And um, from that moment on, I was on the right track again, and God was gracious. And I think that's so important that I know there are people watching that you may have like been in church or maybe you even kind of knew about God, but you've kind of been doing your own thing. Um, but there comes a point for all of us where... You can really sense that he's calling us. Mm-hmm. And, um, and when he does, you know, keep your heart open and just allow him to come in because it is life-changing. And, you know, but the Bible says that sin is fun for a season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So sort it, of. <laughs> sort of. But the thing about it is at the end of it, mm-hmm. there's always sorrow and pain and yes. despair. And yes. it, it really cannot fill the, the void on the inside, can it? There's nothing, yeah. and that's what I was searching for. Yeah, was something to fill what only God could fill. Yeah, and but it's it's beautiful how He will take you on and forward, yeah. and that was such a, a small part of my life, yeah. but He will redeem that. Yeah, you know, and I I'll just mention this little thing. A lot of times there are things that happen in our life that trigger certain behavior Mm -hmm. and I know for you um the loss of your mother because she left when you were 13 years old and divorced your dad and you didn't have a relationship with her for years and years and years that really affected it did you because I wanted to be accepted so desperately that whatever measure I needed to go to right that's what I would do and and the thing about it Cindy is that God knows all of that Mm -hmm. and uh the thing I would want to say to you that are watching is that you you have you have heard even in your head, well, you're not good enough, or oh, you've done this. Oh my goodness, you think God's going to accept you for what you've done? This, 
That's a complete lie. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden mm -hmm. and burdened, and I will give you rest. He's the only one that can give you that rest, that peace. And um, my story is similar to yours, Kendra, but it's kind of funny. I, I write about it in my book, Surrender All, but I was six years old and playing at a friend's house and she kind of got on my nerves. <laughs> I didn't know a six-year-old could have nerves, but I pushed her off the swing. She goes in, in the house crying, telling her mother, I pushed her, her mother comes out and says, did you push her off the swing? And I said, no, I did not. And I lied. And then she said something very intelligent. She said, well, you know, she said, there's someone who sees everything, mm. knows everything. As soon as the convicting power of the Holy Spirit came on wow. the six-year-old soul, <laughs> And because the Lord knew he needed to get me early. And I was just like, I'm sorry I did it. You know, and we prayed, asked Jesus to forgive me. And that is really when I got saved. And I'm like you, it was later in life that I would really develop a personal relationship with God. But children can know Jesus. Yes, they can. I mean, it's really, it's really something. But the story that really stands out to me is my grandfather's story, who was, um, his mother died giving birth to him. Um, she had him at home, and she actually hemorrhaged. And a lot of women died, or died in childbirth, you know. And um, so he never knew his mother. Then his dad committed suicide when he was six years old. And so he was kind of passed between family members, and didn't, they didn't go to church. He was just like you to have one. He told me he cussed like a sailor. And, um, but when he was 19 years of age, he didn't know anything about God or how to pray or gone to church, nothing. He's at uh, work at a tool and dye mill in Greenville, South Carolina on a Monday morning. Wow. And he knelt down at the water fountain. Wow. And he just said, God, if you're there, I need you. And God transformed his life. The first prayer that he prayed was, I can't be a good witness for you with this mouth. Hmm. Wow. And he's, he's, now he's telling me this story. He's in his 70s. Wow. And, um, and he looked at me and he said, you know, from, from that day at 19 till this day, I've never uttered another curse word. Mm -hmm. It was just like God, that was one of the first prayers. He went on to marry my grandmother, had seven children, six girls, one boy would be my dad, and just changed the course of yes. our family. Yes. And uh, that's one of the greatest salvation stories that, that, I've, yes. that I've heard and is so amazing because he had no knowledge of the Bible, of church, or anything. He just cried out to God, yeah. and that's really all that you have to do. Cindy Murdoch, hey. were you a, a child surrendered no. being, or did, was, did it come later for you? You know, um, I was thinking about um, <clears throat> my mom and dad lost my older brother when he was two to a heart defect. Mm. And it devastated I them. I didn't know that. Yeah. Devastated them so bad he died in my grandfather's arms. Oh, wow. Mm. And my dad was off in Coast Guard, and it devastated them so bad they, the marriage almost didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And different people came by to comfort them, and some people came by and just invited them to church. Okay. And it saved the marriage and wow. then, of course, then I came along and then my brothers. But to say all that is that <clears throat> somebody reached out to them. They made a commitment to give their lives to Jesus. And so my dad became a businessman. And so I was raised in church, yeah. vacation Bible school, you know, all of that. It's like that was my life, church. But then when I was about 10, I remember the pastor preaching and there was something about it that it was like I I want to know Jesus I want to give my life to him mm -hmm. and so I remember walking down to the front and and making that commitment for him to be my savior but to say that I really understood it right I really didn't mm -hmm. I I had conviction I lived a convicted life you know I just I lived the only way I knew by being in church and what was ministered and preached but then when I was 14 my cousins invited me to a service that I had never seen anything like it in my life yeah. mm -hmm. and it was people that were so free to worship this is a good old oh Pentecostal my. service. It was, it was a Pentecostal service. With the Holy um, Ghost. Oh, my goodness. Not the Holy Spirit. Holy, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yes, I was right. Right. Yeah, talking yeah, about Holy Pentecost. Yes. Safe, yeah. sanctified, and filled with yeah. the Holy Ghost. Yes. And it was like something came over me in that meeting, and I was 
filled and baptized with what I knew know now, but didn't know then yeah. the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had an experience that was life changing for me. Yeah. And something happened in that meeting when I experienced being so filled with the Holy Spirit that a hunger for his word, yeah. a hunger to have relationship with him mm -hmm. happened in my life. And I can look back now, all these many years later, and realize that God loves us. Mm -hmm. He sees way ahead yeah. in our life. And I believe I could not have gone through things I've gone through in my life mm -hmm. had I not had that encounter with God that made me passionate for his presence, passionate for his word, passionate to know him in a way that when something would come in my life that would knock me literally down, yeah. that he was there for me. And that was like you went through a divorce. Yes. You never planned on going through a divorce. No. That was one of the oh my knockdowns. Yeah. And so many times people think, oh, I'll go through a divorce or have this certain thing happen or do that or, you know somehow that God can't use you, when in reality, he'll take that very thing that you went through and right. use it to help mm -hmm. other yeah. people, and he did that for you. Yeah, and you know, people... And you're remarried now. I am remarried to my prince. Yes. <laughs> she calls and, him his yeah. her prince. That's what she says. And um, so I thank God for that experience in my life because I, I, I didn't see my future ahead. I didn't yeah. see I would be sitting here today at Table Talk. Here you are. Sharing my testimony. Yeah. So people can go to church and they can go through all the motions yeah. and not understand how important that moment of surrender yeah. to say, yeah. Lord, just yeah. be the Lord of my life. I give you all of myself, everything about me. Just be yeah. my Lord and Savior. And so many times, Susanna Lamb, his plan is so much bigger <laughs> and greater than anything we could have ever imagined when yeah. we allow ourselves to be connected to the one who created us. Mm -hmm. yes. It's like we're computers out here mm. and he's the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Until we're connected, mm -hmm. we can't really be utilized the way mm -hmm. that God wants to utilize us because he knew us when he yeah. formed us in our mother's womb. He knows the specific giftings, talents, and abilities, no matter where you are, yes. where you've been, what mistakes you've made. I don't care about that. Does it, right. I'm, look, we're not religious. People mm -hmm. say you're religious. I'm not religious. <laughs> no. I'm, I mean, I'm talking about relationship. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. talking about a relationship that will change your life. Yes. And uh, there you were, born in India. That's right. Could you ever imagined what God had for you? No, not at, not at all. You know, um, my story is a little bit like an opposite because like my parents are pastors. Of course, India is only like three percent Christians, mm -hmm. but my parents are pastors. A day after I was born, I was or yeah, taken straight to the church, mm -hmm. <laughs> dedicated. Um, you know, my parents. I grew up in a church. Everyone's talking about the Holy Spirit. So for me, this was normal life. Yeah. yeah. And um, I remember I was like three, four, and you know. I would speak in tongues because everyone else is. And, you know, I started to learn. And then if you, if you know this, if you grow up in India, if you're not good at math, <laughs> I loved art. And um, <laughs> if you're not good at math, the teachers are really scary and they can be really mean. So I was surrounded by kids of different backgrounds. I would s sit there and, you know, everyone seemed to excel in all these things. And I just was horrible. And I was terrified to leave the house and go to school. Mm. But I had the Holy Spirit. And I would look around and I would think, I'm the only one out of 45 kids that is talking to you, Holy Spirit. So, you know, that was the thing that made me feel loved and secure. That, and I was too scared to ever open my mouth. And I would say, Holy Spirit, I need a pen. I didn't bring a pen. The teacher already hates me. Help me. Oh <laughs> and this boy that uh, would, I would never talk to, he would look over and say, hey, do you need a pen? And I couldn't even say anything. I'd just say, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and this would happen multiple times. So living a life like that, I mean, right through being a teenager, until and, I moved. And moving here. Moving yeah. here. To go to college. Uh, everything was literally, I would say, you know, my security was in being like, I was my dad's girl, like mm -hmm. God's girl. I, that was every, Aww. that was my foundation. Until I went to school, speaking of the religious spirit, I went to a Bible school away from home. And for the first time I encountered the religious spirit. Mm -hmm. And it broke me, it ripped me. I found the wildest girls possible I could find because they were at least real. Mm -hmm. Didn't even know that, hey, that's really bad too. Because that opened. What is religion? What 
what is people who are religious, what are they like? They Oh, so... Uh, the, they're not loving. No, they're, they're very not, judgmental. They're not kind. They're <laughs> uh, judgmental. Uh, like the, the dean of women would come to me and say, I love your pants. And I knew that's the day I'm going to get written up. Uh, the... the the, the people would always judge like how I dress. They thought I wanted attention. I was just put in this box uh, yeah. and I was not. I was the girl that loved Jesus. So it pushed me to the other corner, got in a relationship and then everything started to unravel because my identity was in being God's girl. And then I went to becoming, uh, I, I felt like I've, I cheated on God and I was done. He was done with me and I didn't want to even accept his forgiveness. So for years, my trauma was, don't talk to me. Don't look at me, God. I don't deserve your forgiveness. I couldn't oh. forgive myself until this really beautiful, precious Prince Charming walked into my life. <laughs> and you know, it's amazing. It was at my worst point where I didn't want God to forgive me because I didn't deserve it. And um, this pure, wonderful boy comes, would not stop pursuing me. <laughs> and I wouldn't, I couldn't accept it because I just was like, this is, no, you deserve a girl that also, you know, straight on straight and narrow. And I used to be that girl. But I um, said yes to God, and um, look at our lives now. And you said yes to that, that <laughs> handsome friend. That's it, that's it. Just to say yes, Aww. I accept forgiveness and a very handsome, wonderful man. Yeah. <laughs> and, and two grandchildren later, 11 years of marriage. Yeah. I mean, I'm just telling you, yes. it doesn't matter what mistakes right. you've made. Right. It's never too late to say, okay, God, let's do this. Yeah. He's, re he's yeah. waiting for you to do that. Tavlin, could you just lead us in a prayer? We will pray after you. And those of you that are watching, this is your opportunity to pray a little simple prayer. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He loves you today. Tavlin. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I confess my sins to you. I confess my sins to you. I confess that I need you as my Savior today. I confess that I need you as my Savior today. I invite you to come into my heart. I invite you to come into my heart and cleanse me of all my sins. Cleanse me of all my sins. Thank you today. Thank you today for this gift of salvation. For the gift of salvation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And just add to that little prayer. And fill me with your Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. Can we just say that? Fill, fill me, me with, with your Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. I want everything that you have for me. Mm -hmm. So if you prayed that prayer, we'd love to send you a little book. Now what? And uh, I want you to understand that it's a new day for mm -hmm. you. And uh, God does have something great for you. He has, uh, he, he has allowed you to live in this time and season, you've thought, why am I living here and now and then? Oh, it's a crazy world, everything, all this crazy stuff going on. He has picked this time in eternity for you to live and make a difference. And I really do believe that God is going to use you in the days of head. Well, we are out of time. I hope you enjoyed our conversation today. I want you to remember that living a life surrendered to God and aligned with scripture is such an important factor to being in his will for your life. And it will Keep your focus on the right things. If you're watching today and you need the Lord to move in any area of your life, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We have prayer partners that are standing by ready to pray with you today. Also, be sure to join the conversation online. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing your thoughts about the topics we discuss. Thank you so much for watching. I know that you sense something real about what we're talking about today. Just reach out and receive it today. Receive everything that God has for you. And uh, I tell you what, we're excited about what God has for you in the days ahead. Thank you for watching. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for sharing your story. Hey, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.